So continuing our series of 3D anatomy with the help of this beautiful app, let's have a look at the bones forming the paranasal sinuses. The first bone that we are going to have a look at is the frontal bone. So the frontal bone, as you can see, it forms the roof of the orbit. It's a quite big bone. From the surgical anatomy point of view, in cases of acute frontal sinusitis, we can get an access to the frontal sinus that is over here by external trephine. Okay, that is we make a hole over here, go inside, give wash and we relieve the bacterial load. One thing that is quite important that we need to understand is this notch. You know what is this? This foramen, sorry. It's the supraorbital foramen which has supraorbital nerve and vessels. Okay, as you can see, it forms the roof of the orbit here. Now let's have a look at this next bone. The next bone that we are going to have a look at is one of the common bones that we all keep on hearing and it's our favorite bone for some cause. It's the maxillary sinus. So this maxillary sinus, this bone over here, the maxilla forms the anterior bone forming the major part of the lower sinus. So what is this? This over here is the infraorbital foramen. And as you can see, it is very close to the floor of the orbit. That is, it is actually one centimeter below the inferior orbital rim. Okay? This area over here is the thinnest area of the bone. And when someone has acute uh, sinusitis, this area is quite tender. And they usually complain about pain. And that's one of the reasons when patients, they have acute maxillary sinusitis, Look at its neighboring structure, the teeth. They do have dental pain. Okay. Now, another surgical uh, important clinical aspect over here is we can have an access to this area via an external approach called as cadwell luck procedure. Okay. So imagine now on top of this, there is soft tissue. And around this area, you have the gingival buccal sulcus. So after making an incision, we can go over here and take the thinnest part of bone out to get an access to the maxillary sinus. Many people prefer this approach as they would like to maintain the ostium intact. So moving on, here this part is the inferior concha, that is the inferior turbinate. Quite a thick bone, if you can see. There is a huge bony component in the inferior turbinate. And this turbinates, this is the ideal position of the turbinates. If this turbinates, they are placed more medially on this part over here, it can cause nose block. And one of the things that why we can do turbinoplasty or patients do get benefited by that. Remember patient selection is very important. Have a look at this position. Okay. Now we are going to talk about some more important and scary bones. As I said that it's an universal consensus that maxilla is your friendly bone and there are other bones which I wouldn't say unfriendly but we are scared of it. The spinoid and the ethmoid bones. Now, why they are scary is because of the important structures around it, okay? Now, if this maxillary sinus, the important structure in orbital foramen, if we injure this, the morbidity associated with this injury is less as compared to injuries that can occur surrounding this bone. You have got important structures, carotid and optic, which can have high impact if there are any complications and injury. So this is the spinoid bone. This is the lateral view. Let's move around. 
you know, we have a good access to technology and we should make complete use of it. These plates over here, can you see? These are the pterygoid plates. Okay. And this is the Voma bone. We are having this skull base view. This area, this flat part is the greater wing of spinoid. Let's have a look from other angle. Okay, as you can see, this is a spinoid bone. It forms a lateral aspect of the orbit. Can you tell me what is this? This foramen. Easy, right? Is the superior orbital fissure. Not a foramen, it's a fissure. Now, can you see this? This is the optic canal. Now, here you understand the importance of the decompression of this bone. How much you can decompress and how it can relieve pressure. So, we are done with the spinoid. You see, we need to have these images in our brain and have a special orientation when we look at the scans or when we operate. Surgery requires a lot of imagination and that's why virtual reality or virtual orientation is necessary. This allows us to understand where we are. So I think we have enough of spinoid. Let's go to the ethmoids. These are the ethmoid bones. So spinoid and ethmoids, they are neighbors as you can see. Ethmoids form the medial aspect of the orbit. There are certain foramens which form the exit points of posterior anterithmoid, posterior thermoidal and anterithmoidal. Okay. Now clinically, imagine a person coming with epistaxis following trauma. So what is the most common cause of epistaxis following trauma is the injury to the anterithmoidal artery. And we want to control bleeding and we are going via the external approach. Okay. So when we make an incision over here, we need to hug these bones. That is the frontal bone, lacrimal, ethmoid, and then we can get an access over here. Using a ball probe, you can delineate the vessel and get control and cauterize it. Okay. This is the nasal view of the ethmoid. In the next videos, we will have a look at the individual bones and see how we understand and imagine the attachments and its neighboring structures. So next time, whenever you see a scan or attend an operating theater, have these images in your mind, the spinoid, the frontal, nasal bone, maxilla sinus, the behind the maxillary bone and also have this kind of spatial orientation from behind and the skull base area. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. See you in the next video.